Guys, welcome back to the Outer Bounds Show. Boy, have we got a special episode for you lined up here today. We spoke to three-time major champion, Golf Hall of Famer, Podrick Harrington. We're at the 151st Open at Royal Liverpool, having a small gathering to celebrate 25 years of Podrick being at Wilson Golf. Uh, we were sat down, just chilled out on the sofa, having a little little chat. We were scheduled in for 10, 15 minutes. We end up speaking to Podrick for over an hour for you guys. So this one is such a good episode. Thanks to Podrick for giving up your time. Currently just sat down having a chat about how Jay can get below seven handicaps. So loads to discuss, loads to take away from this one. Hope you enjoy the show. Yeah. You, you know, it's a different attitude. And the attitude, I really thought of it like that before, the attitude actually. is far more important than skill at this stage. Once you, once you, if you've got to seven, you, I'm assuming you've got a decent skill, so yeah. it's more about attitude. Yeah, because I don't, as well, like Trey said to me before, my course management on the like, golf course yeah. is not, it's, it's like, it's, it's, you, well, you make so many yeah. silly things. Silly that's mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, in the end of the day, that's like turning around. Like, so would you, would you say that if I really want to get better, Going to play golf on my own would be better for me. Yes. Okay. So two things: playing golf on your own yeah. is really good. Playing golf with guys who are better than you is yeah. really good, and then a little bit of competition. All three of those things. Yeah. But there's no doubt, hitting shots on the driving range is going to be the least thing that will improve you. Least. I I think because he is somebody who will obsess over. He said it to me. What did you say to me earlier on in the week? It was like. I really want it to look good. No, no, no. no. I, I really said, want so it what to I just said, look good. Okay, the it's analogy, got a function, right? Padre, the analogy I would use, Paddy, is this. When I watch, just from my eyes, yeah. which is pleasing to my eyes, when I watch tennis, yeah. I like the look of Federer. Okay. I don't care if he's the best or not. He will be very good. But for me, from my eye, I like to see something that looks classy, okay. gracious, uh, effortless. Okay. So like, if I'm... I, I said this to you before, I was scoring better before, but now I've tried to change my swing to make it look better. I'm not scoring as much, but at least I'm, I'm happy with my swing. Yeah, I, I used to have this, I used to get a, have a row with guys <laughs> in pro <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd be playing with three amateur, I'd get frustrated because, you know, I'd be saying, well, look, if you spend 10, 20 minutes chipping, mm. you're going to lower your handicap and you're going to win competitions. And it took me a while, because that's where I'd be in that category of, get the best score. Yeah. Took me a while to realise, I'd say 90% of golfers play golf not to shoot a good score, but to hit the golf ball well. Mm. Yeah. To actually make a good swing, make a good strike, hit the ball, and, and, and the enjoyment they get is much more from being physically good at the game. Whereas mm. there is a small percentage who are the ones just who just want to win. Score and win. Just get the job done, yeah. whatever. So you're obviously falling into the category that you want to look pretty. <laughs> well, where, where do you think but you I just, are? I just want to do both. I, I, I want to do both. I feel like if my swing looks effortless where I'm using less strength, that means I'm using my technique is better. Efficient. Yeah, yeah then my okay, score will be more consistent, okay. more regularly. I'm gonna, there's a lie there. Though. Okay, so the best golf swing is using every ounce of muscle but doesn't look like it. Yeah, that's okay, right. Okay, so, yeah. so you, 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 you know, Ernie Els, the big easy, would be the one that was, you know, what a beautiful mm. swing. But he was hitting the golf ball really oh. hard in his head, but the coordination belied what you saw. Mm. So if you, got a, if you got somebody with a poor golf swing, they would, and they try to hit a ball hard, they'd look like they're trying to hit, hit it hard. Yeah. Whereas if you really, really want a pure golf swing, it would be somebody who was swinging out of their boots yet they're staying balanced yeah. so you, yeah. you, uh, you'd be wrong I, I, I think you'd be I think you have to experiment between making a really rhythmical swing a really you know one of those swings that is languid and you know yeah. you've got time yeah. but you've got to spend some time violence isn't a bad thing either mm -hmm. like yeah. it'd be like turning around we went back and played football you know if you trained, you'd have to train with raw violence and speed yeah. at times. As you train as you play. Yeah, and yeah. then, yeah. It, 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 well, you would have seen it before. There's, there's two players running down the pitch, and it, could be, and it could be just purely body type and body size. One looks graceful and one looks yeah. awkward. Yeah. And yet they're both That's running true. at the same pace. Yeah. And we, have that, we have a big problem in golf with that, that 
people will really o- overestimate a player's ability based on how they look. Mm. Not even swing. You know, if, if the guy is, you know, six foot four, blonde with white shoulders, oh, he must be great, you know. Mm. And, and, and a, another guy who's like five eight and white hips and that, mm. he might be a better player and nobody thinks he's, a, you know, just because yeah. he doesn't look the part. That's mm. true. So you, you could fall into that trap. But I, I, I think... It is your personality, so in the end of the day, you want a pretty swing. By the way, it's hard to have a pretty swing when you're very tall. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, 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 it's burnt my heart. Yeah, no, no, no. But all, all, all the textbook stuff, yeah. like it's Ben Hogan. Mm. He's 5'9 and skinny. Yeah. It's very hard. It's very hard. Once you get over 6'2", over there's a question whether the plane has to have two movements. So it, it's, it's really hard to have. The smaller guys are the ones who look... Much so what you're saying basically just focus on scoring then forget about the way no, you look no your personality likes the way you know, <laughs> you want to, I'm just saying just Chase be that aware that there's swing. two elements yeah. that oh. there is scoring and there is just you know your enjoyment comes out of making a nice swing a nice strike uh, you know yeah because I've, I've played like rounds where I feel like I've scored well and I'd be like, yeah, but I didn't. My ball striking weren't good. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> <laughs> you don't think you're alone in that. There's, there's like, there's, a, as I said, there's a lot of amateurs, and there's a size of amount of professional golfers who are who are caught up like that. You'd be surprised how many professional really? golfers. Mm. I, I and I, I would be the opposite. So, do you think you're going back to that original question? Do you think you're somebody who? is purely orientated on score, performance, impact, or you like, how is it looking? I was yeah. purely orientated with score, score, performance. I have fallen into the trap, no doubt, of wanting to have a beautiful swing and technical mm. proficiency because I didn't have it. I was brought up on a golf course with no practice ground, so no driving range, nothing like that. So I just played and everything in my house was interesting. I had four older brothers. It was all competition. Mm. Whatever we did, we were trying to beat the hell out of each other. And it was only when I probably got to be a professional, not even as an amateur, so 25 years of age, and I'm then presented with all these beautiful facilities mm. and practice balls and conditions that I started to want to swing the club better. But by the way, naturally, once you become a professional golfer, you hit the golf ball better. Because you're hanging out with guys who hit Standards it better. Standards are better. You the see, con- yeah. the, the yeah. conditions are better. It's warm. Like it, you're going to swing the club better in warm conditions. Mm-hmm. If you're playing in, in nasty, rainy weather, yeah. you know you you're getting it's the job done already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're going to swing it in warm weather where you're loose mm-hmm. and you're you know. Did you like that though when you had to go out and play tournaments when it was nasty and gritty? And I didn't know any different. You just, I, just I knew it was an advantage to me. There's no doubt. I knew it was an advantage to go out and play in in the in the tougher conditions. I knew I could handle it. But I think, uh, and this would be interesting. So, I only figured this out again in the last year or two. There's people who play golf that believe that if they hit a bad drive, say miss the fairway, or they miss the green, that they deserve to make a bogey at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the guy. Yeah, yeah. I had no, I had no concept. <laughs> Of yeah, that, yeah. I just I just assumed the score at the hole was the score at the hole. Yeah. So, I, if I hit a bad shot, a second bad shot, I'd be still trying to get it up and down. It doesn't matter, and I'd still Where be trying is, to make yeah. a par. And I'd have no shame or embarrassment, yeah. as in that's what I scored. And it's only now, when I talk to, especially really good players who who who, probably didn't fulfil their potential, that there's a genuine element in them, you know that they, they want to come in after a round of golf and say, yeah, I shot 72, I hit all 18 greens and two put in every one of them. As in, there's a badge of honour to say that I two put in every green. And I'm like, <laughs> but you've had the same score. Well, in well, what, what, what use is that? Yeah. You, know, you, you know, your score is your score. And it doesn't, mm. it matters somewhat only in the sense of longevity if the better you play the less stress in your game and that but you can't you cannot go out there and believe that there's you cannot believe there's a fairness to the game as in uh, that hit the fairway hit the green two put it is how you're you meant to play yeah yeah, it, yeah exactly that's it yeah. doesn't owe you anything yeah. there's no 
I deserve this score. I de this should be the way it should work. Yeah, out. Golf is yeah. just shoot the score on the day. I can tell you, you will hit a great shot and finish in a rubbish place some days, and another time you'll hit a terrible shot and get a great break. Mm. That's the nature of the game. The better you get, the less those two things will affect your outcome. Mm. But in general, it happens. And there's nobody who wins a tournament, ever, that doesn't get good breaks. Mm. And, and even maybe avoided the bad breaks that they didn't even see. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, the amount of times, and, and, and again, if you, if you, it'd be interesting. I, I, I'm, I'm fascinated because I could see it in golf and I often wonder how it transfers into, into, into football. Yeah. So you, you get a guy who scores 30 goals in a season and he's sold the following year for record fees based on he scores 30 goals. Yeah. But if the guy averages 15 goals a year and he's just scored 30, well, he's going to drop down to 10 probably for three years, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that, to get his average back. So he should be, instead of being sold at a 30 goal man, he should be sold at a 10 goal person. An average, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. that's true. Like a a Haaland or somebody like that like how is he going to average out yeah, well, we don't, his, his average could yeah. be 30 goals yeah. it might see Haaland Haaland's someone that I, I look at and I've had this debate many a times now with people you know in the football world and they say he's great he's going to score every goal scoring record could he be the best striker ever one day and I'm like no he can't he probably won't even be in the top 10 ever and the reason why I say that okay, is because it. he's just a goal scorer yeah. as in he's not interested in playing football He's just interested in putting the ball in the goal. And for me, the best players in the world, they have all elements to their game oh, 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 oh. that make them a yeah, better football player. Yeah, we know where the golf comes from. Do you see where I'm coming from? So like, for me, it's not just about putting the ball in the hole. It's about everything else you do to get there as well. Right? So when I see people like Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, Brazilian Ronaldo, Maradona, all these kind of players, okay, well, then, where, I think about the perfection. what they do around the pitch. I'm not interested in Haaland just turning up in the 90th minute to score one goal and done nothing else for the 89. That is harsh. harsh that, you can see it? where the goal yeah, comes yeah, I can through see though, where can't you? But yeah. I do respect I, 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 I that he's a, a one, he will be one of the best, greatest goal scorers. If you ask me that, I'll say to him, anyone, he will be one of the greatest goal scorers ever. But one of the best strikers or forwards, he won't be in the top 10, in my opinion. In your in, but. How can we underestimate putting the ball in the net? Mm. So, goal so, so my, my, my one of that is Robbie Keane is, holds the record for the most goals scored in Ireland ever. He, he's 10th in the world for goals scored for his country. Robbie's right? a, a fantastic player, you know. Yes, but he's he gets amazing. very little credit in Ireland. He gets I, no credit in I Ireland. was talking about this the other day. For me, he's one of the most underrated forwards the Premier League scene, honestly. And I'm now, not just saying there's that. there's a reason for it. Right, for me, for me looking in, there's a reason, right? So he, he has done this, and from an Irish context, you know, excelled in the Premier League and, and, and in European leagues. This is, for Ireland in the modern times, this doesn't happen. We just don't have players at that level. And yet he gets no credit in Ireland. Like, if you went in Ireland and they started listing out the best players in Ireland, there's no way Robbie Keane would be considered. Now, there's a reason for it, right? Mm. One, a little bit like we talked before, not as graceful. Mm -hmm. You know, his tumble after he scored was not particularly yeah. good. You know, yeah. it's like, stop tumbling. It doesn't yeah. look good. Yeah. Okay. But Robbie missed chances. But if you miss three chances and score one, is that not better than missing no chances but mm. scoring zero? Mm. Yeah. And, and I think people were, were sometimes critical because he created enough chances that he, you know, Managed to put one or two away. Maybe he's... It's like I, I often say with Brian O'Driscoll is our best rugby player ever and he's held an, an internationally on a great standard. But if you watched his games, right, Brian O'Driscoll was unbelievably successful but because he put himself out there he probably made more mistakes than the next person. Yeah. So Robbie Keane made lots of... People say, oh, he yeah. missed so many goals. No. But if you put yourself out there, you're mm. going to miss. That's why you score. Yeah, so so that I, I, I'm going back to Harland. Scoring goals, <laughs> there has to be. We're very lucky, we're very lucky in golf. You're and a Harland I, fan. Well, no, I'm, I'm, it's not that I'm a Harland fan. I'm, I'm a. You can appreciate the. I'm a, I love the fact in golf 
that it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks about you, judges you, the score is what counts. Mm. So yeah, I love that. that is if Harland was a golfer and he goes and wins 19 majors, well, he's the greatest golfer okay, of all Okay, here's one time. for you. I'm going to make an analogy for you, though. Yeah. A, a lot of Harland's play now, you look at him play, he's tw 21 years old, I think he yeah. is, 22 years old. You're looking at Harland as he is today right now. Yeah. When he gets injuries, when he loses his youth, when he loses his strength, what is going to make him score goals then? Because if he doesn't have those things he relies on now, how he's scoring goals... The other things, which is technique, intelligence, team, like getting involved in the game, those okay. things, those things there are the things that help Messi, Ronaldo, like all these players that we see playing into their late 30s still continue to dominate. Okay, one thing that would stand against Harland at the moment is he's a, like we said about golf, he can't be graceful with the size of it's very hard for him to have yeah. that that he, yeah. you know he's always going to be accused of you know actually oh, just leaned in and pushed your man yeah. because he's a big guy any movement from him you know there'll be people saying his physicality but they'll, they'll judge his physicality and say no nah, he's using his physicality too much that's why he scored mm. whereas Messi had to use his his his, his brains mm. and it, and his skills Skill. because yeah. he was only a little but that's guy. how you get longevity though mm. that's what I'm trying to say uh, yeah but because at is, some point your physical attributes will leave you. Five yeah, time, I agree. Five time comes to everyone. Well, not yeah. just the physical attributes. The problem is there's other guys who are actually as physical. That's, that's what happens. But I, I, I will think we can't judge him now, mm. for one. You can because you're, you're inside. I can't. I, I, I haven't got the knowledge to know. I'm just enough. guessing. I'm just going... I'm, I mean, yes, I've, I've been in the sport since a young age, but I just look at... I see so many players that have those kind of raw attributes like yeah. speed and power yeah. that once they lose them, and I'm not saying this is going to be him, yeah. but once they lose them, they become kind of pedestrian within the game. So yeah. someone I, I, I would make an analogy to is like Aubameyang. When Aubameyang was at Arsenal, breaking goal scoring records, looked like amazing. It, but then he lost that like yard of pace and all of a sudden he wasn't as effective anymore because... That's what he relied on. I, mm. I, 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 where you see it more, where it's easier to see that is in underage football. When you have a, a, an under 14 who's 16, who, yeah. who looks like a 16 yeah. year old, his skills don't develop because he can push by. Yeah. He do, he, he, he's getting the job done, whereas you're always better with the little person, little person syndrome. That then grows up big. Grows up, yeah. So you, the guy, who, he, yeah, because you learn the, the, yeah, you have the to technical do it things. Way. But yeah, exactly. Do you, do you think if a player's on top, top, top of their game and they lose that yard of pace or that little, it doesn't affect them as much as an average player? No, I think that but, okay. For, for when you when we're talking about the greatest ever players, yeah. right? You look at them, and the reason why they can be called the greatest because longevity as well, mm. right? You won't say someone's the greatest ever player if they've just played well for five years. They need to be playing well over that, the course yeah, of 10 to 15 years, yeah. right? The only way you can play at that level is by having a great mind mm. on the pitch, by Keep having your technical... Healthy. Of course, health, All but the technical attributes of the game. So like, even when I look at golf, I look at golf in the same way as I would football, for example. Yeah. To have that longevity throughout your career, you're going to get to a point where as you get older, you're going to lose distance. But when you lose distance, you need to improve at something else in your game to, you know... Yeah, there, there, there's no doubt the intelligence is, is, is the most important thing for longevity, as in you'll have a run with, with, with skills. Yeah. And, and the problem we've seen in golf is there's so many players coming in with huge skill. Mm. And it's kind of saturating the, the game that careers are going to be very short going forward. In golf. golf, in golf, yeah. So you, you, wow, you, I'm surprised well, you say that. If if you if you've a hundred and fifty really good players, yeah, it's hard to distinguish between them. But they're all so good that the skillful fella can't necessarily beat them because when they when when the the average player with great skill, not mm. like the average sort of how would I describe this. So why I, I just two types of golfers. You've got the physical skill and you've got a player. Mm -hmm. Player gets the job done, knows what he's doing. But there's more guys with physical skill coming into the game. Yeah. That can, and, and they're negating the player because yeah. on their day, yeah, they, 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 they're brilliant. Do you think yeah. equipment's got anything to do with that? 
size of driver heads, I, I, I ball. Think, I, I just think there's more players with more knowledge, with more skill. Coming like up, uh, no, technology. And my 15-year-old son, he's not a golfer. He plays rugby. But, you know, two of his rugby friends sent me, sent through him videos of their golf okay. swing. And I looked at both the swings. And both of them could have a golf swing to play on tour. Yeah. Okay? Now, I asked, well, well what, what are they like? He said, well, one is a two handicap, which sounds good at two handicap. But at 15 years of age, he's not on any of the, the junior panels. So he's mm. not one of the best boys in his area, mm. right? And the other one had, I don't think, had a handicap. He did. So they were both learning to swing the golf club off social media. Both yeah, obsessed with, with good it. technique. Could, oh, these guys were great. But there's more to they it, They were right? players. Yeah, there's more to it. But the problem is the game is saturated with guys, guys like this. And, and you, you can't, if there's one of those guys... You'd love to play head head to head with any of them mm. because once you put them out of position, mm. they don't know what to do. Yeah, yeah. But when there's a hundred of them, yeah. ten of those guys aren't getting out of position, so they're having a great day yeah. and they're they're going to going to score and shoot. So it's, like it's hard to beat. That ugly them. zone, isn't it? Like well, the, the ugly zone is no use. It, it's useful on a one on one, and and it's useful when when you're in trouble and when you have to dig deep and when mm. you're coming down the stretch. But the problem is. The ugly zone doesn't count when you're competing against 30 of these physically gifted players. And, and you only have to look at golfers. Golfers have gone, it wasn't a European thing, but certainly with Americans. If you played golf in America, say 40 years ago, mm. basically, do you play American football? No. Do you play basketball? No. Do you play baseball? No. Are you, do you play athletics? No. Okay, you can go play golf. <laughs> okay, so you were you were the physical reject in your in your yeah. in your school in your high school, whereas now they're playing well, everything. No, the number one athlete in school in school is quite possibly going to choose golf now. Okay, so I look at golf and I I'm surprised with what you said there actually because I look at golf now and if if, if you said to me you could go back now and be a Premier League football player or play golf, I would probably go with the golf. To play in the highest level on the PGA yeah, Tour. That's a logical thought. Because, yeah, because longevity. Yeah, you ain't going to think logical when you're 15 years old. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to think yeah, yeah. about drink, but, move, but, but, you know, girls, yeah, everything. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, there are, that, it's a consideration now. Mm. Golf is considered, oh, it's considered a sport that an athlete can do. Whereas, as I said, never been as bad in Europe that way, but it's certainly in the States for, you know, 20, 30, 20 years ago and previous, it really wasn't for the athletes. Mm. You know, and, and that's why you often see the golfers will be all sorts of shapes and sizes. Whereas you go into the locker room this week mm. and like, you go into the locker room, what, you had 6'4"? Yeah. You, you will just look like one yeah. of the, one, normal. I've seen, well, yeah, you I've saw seen, um, yeah. Trey. Yeah, Trey. Yeah, Trey. Yeah. But yeah. There's, there's a bu Trey is a, there's a bunch of Trey Malinaxes mm. out there. Yeah. Mm. And they're physically gifted. They can hit it. Mm. Uh, like Trey is a perfect example of, of you know he could be more of a player mm. but he I'd love to hit the, I'd love to swing the club and hit the golf ball like Trey Mollinax mm. but yeah. he'd like to think like me yeah yeah but that's that's the way that's, that's, yeah, 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 that's yeah, experience yeah, yeah. isn't it yeah the, but we're not even from experience I thought like this when I came out I just the way I just the way I learned my golf mm. I, I grew up on a on a, a very difficult windy tricky golf course so you couldn't play nice golf you just couldn't. So how so how how has your mindset changed from when you were young and when you was dominating compared to like the way you play golf now? Has anything changed in that respect? Uh, yeah, I got burnt out. Mm. You know, like you, you, you think golf there is a longevity, but basically I'm not even sure how it's gonna affect the younger guys because they're starting young. I, I started like but careers were about twenty years long. Yeah. And to be honest, about the last five of them were heading out to America or Saudi Arabia. <laughs> you know, as in you, you, you know, the, you take about eight years to get going, and then you have that peak for, mm. you know, maybe five years, another three years, okay, and then the last five years, it's just you know, people wouldn't notice, but you're still. But generally, career all golfers finish by twenty years, mm. and then they came back after that. And I, and I was pretty similar, you know, 2016, I was still playing, but I, I was well burned out. Everything was, I was... 
When you say burnt out, you mean like injuries like or strength or just I, I, or drained. Plenty of injuries, but just it was mentally draining. It was hard work. So I, I should basically change my attitude a few years ago. So I, I couldn't do keep up with the pace that I was doing as a to get me where I was as a kid. Not as a as a young pro, you know the amount of time I spent in the gym, the amount of the diet, the the whole professional Everything. works. I'm much more relaxed now. Yeah. So a, a perfect example of, a, of explaining it, I, and I kind of think this sums it up. So in the height of my career, if somebody said we're going for dinner, I go, well, eight o'clock, they say dinner. I say, well, you know, got to go for physio. Yeah. You know, I, I've got to get in the gym. You no, know, I, 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 I can completely, yeah. I can completely where, understand that. Yeah. Where, where I, I would now, say that, yeah. But, but yeah. what I do now, is it dinner, eight o'clock, yeah, great. I'm ch- you know, I'm, I'm, I'm changing are my plan. Are you better like that now? Yeah, because yeah. if I don't, if I don't enjoy my life now, I just, I, I, I can't, what, what I mean by that is, to enjoy the golf, I've actually had to enjoy the whole, what goes with it. Yeah. Whereas before it was so much, about, I think, like, you know, in some ways, if, if they ran a tournament next week on, a, on, on the runway out, 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 out here, say we went to Liverpool and we mm-hmm. ran it on the runway, I turn up and play as a as a, now. Uh, I don't think so. I yeah. want to go to a nice golf course. I want a nice hotel. I want a nice. You know, I want because that makes me enjoy my life. I, yeah. You know, it, it comes to us all, and, and I think you as a footballer, there's a lot of people who play football. Say, oh, it's a long career. Yes, we can keep playing, but we're just like every other sports person. You you probably start pretty competitively at sixteen. Yeah. Oh, before that. I know you're, but yeah. really, okay. Yeah. The thing is with football, though. Is remember, golf is a you know it's a you sport. It's a me sport. Yeah. Right. Well, football is a team sport. And what I remember, my first when I first signed my professional contract. So the first day I went full time, I remember the coach came in and said there was about thirty of us in this room, and he said we'll be happy with you if two of you make it. And we looked around as if to say. It's 30 of us here though. Yeah, well, you better outwork the other tw- exactly. at least 28 of them. I remember, like, at the time, it's like you're not just competing against other people, like, in your position, you're competing against people in another yeah. position yeah. because there's financial things involved as well, yeah. right? So, if I'm an average forward, but he's a top keeper and they've only got enough budget for one player, they're going to take the keeper over me, it's, right? So, I need to perform all the time it, in training. People have no understanding <clears throat> yeah. of sport. How difficult it is to be that one in golf it's so lucky that to be honest you can overcome anything because it's up to you if you if you yeah you just do it long enough you can do it in team sport obviously if you don't make that grade and you get left out at Mm. any stage you can't really get back but that's the thing as well like people don't understand this right and i'll say it now this is the truth Certain managers always choose, choose certain players. Right? Yeah. They oh, might have a liking to certain everybody's players. Everybody's biased. The only way you can get back into a team sometimes is if your mate, get, it's person in your position gets injured. Mm-hmm. So you're you half kind of place. wishing like, I need him to get injured in order for me to get my chance again where I can come and make a claim yeah. to play again, which is, is bad because you want to be a good teammate, but at the same time, you yeah. want to play. I don't know. I, I've got it's, to say... So it's crazy. I, I, I'm... So happy. I played some teams. and When I was 18, I didn't get picked in the top 20 juniors in Ireland. Okay? And I was the best. How's that then? Selector. You know, mm. it's Someone's ama- opinion. Yeah. Someone's opinion yeah, and negotiations. And, yeah, well, just it, thankfully Especially I'm not involved, involved in, a, in, a, in a team like that. That it's, it's very, very hard that you can be, as you said... You could even be good enough, but because of financial considerations, they, they go with somebody else. Yeah. You could be even, like you mightn't be mature at 20, yeah. and yet yeah. your, your career is, they're selling you off, or you're, you're finished because they're keeping somebody else, but yeah. you, know, you still have a little bit of speed, a little bit yeah. of growing, and a little bit of maturity to go, and if the manager doesn't see that in you, yeah. and ultimately, which we all know, you get a knock in your confidence. Are you ever coming back? Yeah. No, knowing all of that kind of that you do now, touching on the junior yeah. side and everything we just spoke about, would you do anything differently if you, you were to go back? Because you had a great career, of course. Not necessarily for me in, in, in golf, no. I, it made me who I am. Yeah. 
once I became an, a, a, a successful athlete, I definitely would have toned back the practice. Okay. I've been a yeah, I, I see your hands yeah, yeah. well. <laughs> I still like practicing. I I really do do enjoy it, and I'm I'm obsessive. But I would, I would kind of say, what gets you there is doing more than everybody else. Yeah. But once you're there, you have to understand you've got to do it the right way and, and get the right balance. Yeah, Whereas I kept going at the pace. So it's training hard to begin with, but yeah, yeah, you, you have, have to train smart. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah you yeah. have to train smart. Hard. Absolutely. Like I I I always say it in golf, you can. And this is the open week. This is a perfect example. So all the rookies here this week, all the inexperienced guys, all the guys who don't think they can win, they're all, all going to prepare to be ready Thursday morning. Whereas the most important thing, if you think you can win this, you're preparing for Sunday afternoon. You're going the whole week. You, you're thinking, how do I be... About in the mix on a Sunday. The freshest I can be Sunday, Sunday. afternoon because if I'm in contention, I need yeah. to be 100%. Because you can so, peak too soon, right? It, 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 I burnt out so out many Thursday times. Friday. Burnt out third. Yeah, but it, but remember, you. if you're if you're a rookie, mm -hmm. you're happy to make the cut. So yeah. that's what you're here for, to play well Thursday, Friday. And I, I'm not saying that... I, I'd probably play max 27 holes practice this week, nine each day. Mm. So there might be something on Thursday that I've missed. And I'm taking a risk, but the risk I'm taking is if I get to Sunday and I'm getting contention, mm. I'll be fresh. Yeah. And that's more important to me to be in contention, to be fresh when I'm in contention because that's the point you need to have it. So I'm taking a small chance that, you know, I didn't hit a putt to that back left hand pin yeah. position. Well, what's the, maybe I have it in the tournament. You know, who knows? Don't know. Maybe it comes into play. I'm taking a small chance that I'm, I haven't got everything covered by Thursday. But I'm guaranteeing that if I, everything goes right Thursday, Friday, Saturday, that I'm still ready Sunday. And maybe as I'm a little older, I don't know, even as a young person, you've got to be, mm. you got to think, what, would, what do you need to do if you're in contention Sunday? How can you be ready for that? That's the most important thing. It's funny you say that, because yeah. basically you're saying, you know, if you, you're saying focus on getting into contention for the Sunday and preparing for the Sunday, but then... It's almost like those days to get you to the Sunday mm. can burn you out. Yeah. yeah, can burn you out. If you think back That's to crazy. like, yeah. if you think your 2008 season when you've yeah. done so well, yeah. Yeah. has your prep stayed the same from then up until like now? How Not now, up? no, yeah. but it's Different. certainly stayed the same for a long period of time. Yeah. Uh, what's interesting is, as I said, I, I changed mentally for uh, the last couple of years to mm. be a bit more relaxed and enjoy it and, and, and that. And then I started playing well, playing well on the Champions Tour. And now, because I'm playing well, I've had to get a little bit more professional. <laughs> <laughs> I had to, yeah, it's, it's kind it's of, oh, now, yeah, yeah. I've had to do a little bit, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, that, that's, been, that's been quite interesting how the temptation to become, go back to being yeah. seriously professional and, you know, and all that, like, yeah. Patrick, I, I, I see a stat the other day, I just come across it on the, in the Instagram, and I see that um, when Tiger Woods was leading a tournament, 93% of the time he'd win it. How was it playing against someone like that at the peak of your powers? I believe I'm the only player who played with him more than 10 times who has a better scoring record. Mm while playing with him. <laughs> now, there, there's, there's two points to that. One, in Japan. I'm very dogged person. So yeah. I, I'd be kind of, I'd be just, I used to build everybody up. I'd be afraid of everybody. I think he's great, he's great. So I'd be really fighting and I'd be used to fighting against players. So yeah. Tiger was just another player to fight, fight against. Whereas some of the guys who played bad against Tiger felt they were the top dog and all of a sudden they, they got a new top dog and they, they'd never seen that in their whole time. My whole career was beating people that thought they were better than me. So, you Not know, I, it was, I, I was always that type of person. Yeah. So that was a good start. And the second thing, I think with Tiger, he, he, I, 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 I enjoy playing with Tiger. I think Tiger liked playing with me because I kind of, I, I would push him mm. and he was really, really, Tiger, Tiger had more in the tank. We, we, we saw, probably saw the best of Tiger in 2000 and then he got very 
conservative in his play because he knew he could win by just staying in the game. Yeah. It would if there was more good players who could push him, he would have actually even done more spectacular things. Wow. He really he had more in the tank. So it, it was funny with Tiger, the way to beat him. And 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 this is the, the, I I I think this is the same with all sports. So when I came out in the tour. Pretty quickly, I'm competing against Colin Montgomery, who was the European number one. And, you know, six months previous, I'm watching him on TV. <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and whether that's it, Retief Goose and Ernie Els, Colin Montgomery, they were the big stars when I came out in Europe. And I'm all of a sudden playing against them. And I'm like, so what you have to do, you have a tendency to go, well, Monty's game is up there and my game is down here. So I'm going to have to raise my game to beat Monty. And of course, if you try and raise your game, you're going to fail terribly. You're going yeah. to play rubbish. But the reality is you've overestimated where Monty is and he's, he's actually there. And you know, you always underestimate yourself and you're actually there. Clearly, he's still better than you. Tiger is still better than me, okay? Yeah. But in golf, okay, Tiger's not used to somebody hanging around, right? So I'm hanging around there and Tiger just gets a little bit, little bit, you know, I'm just hanging around and I'm keeping myself there. And then, of course, with golf, on the day, it goes like that. Yeah. Yeah, you know, golf is a great sport. It's not like 100 metres. Yeah. That if somebody's better than you 100 metres, you're never yeah. beating them. But within golf, as long as you, especially as well, if you are there and you play your own game, generally you play that little bit better. It's yeah. amazing how much when you relax into, uh, I've been quoted as saying this recently, you know, if you believe you can win with your B game, your A game turns up. Yeah. When you think you need your A game, same. your B game turns up. Well, I, I, and going back to the footballers, because I I, 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 well, no, it's not that I like football, but I want, Good I want comparison. to, I want to, I want to know the answers from footballers that I think about golf. So, when the guy is scoring his thirty goals, things are so, coming so easy for him. He knows he's going to score, so when he gets his chance, he puts it in the yeah. net. That that goes without saying. Yeah. yeah, and when he's not scoring, again. He's, he's trying to turn up and he thinks, I need a big game. Yeah. I need my A game. I need to get out there. And of course, when you put yourself under that pressure, mm. then all of a sudden the B game turns yeah, up. I'll tell you, I tell you the, the thing that I've been in situations where I hadn't scored. Yeah. And then like you said, since the media, Jay hadn't mm. scored. You know, yeah. should drop him, all that kind of stuff. I've never read anything written about me since I'm 18 years of age. Really? Yep. Never. Never. Not been interested. Something upset me. Mm. It got in, my, got in my head. I lost a match. And I know I can't control the media. I don't live in North Korea. So I'm not Trump. Mm. So <laughs> <laughs> I, what can you do? Don't read it. So like, there should be no way when you were a footballer that you should have been allowed read any newspapers. Mm -hmm. you, yeah. you, and you're right. You, and I have to go. I had to go in my career. Not now. I had to go. And this is hard with your mother. Because your mother is completely different to everybody else and say, Mum, you're not allowed to tell me what it people is. are saying yeah. or doing. Because they don't know. Right. They have yeah. no idea what your job on the pitch is that day, what you're meant to do. They don't know. And they're making comments and they're doing this. It's true. Don't let get so no athlete should ever read somebody. I, I used to use that to me, for me personally, I used to use that as kind of like if I read something negative about myself, yeah. that used to give me extra drive. Extra okay. Michael Jordan. I, 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 don't, yeah. I don't know, but but. But one thing I one thing I, what I liked about what you said about Robbie Keane because I think Robbie Keane was a fantastic striker. And I he think scored right. the most yeah, goals for Ireland, top ten. That is it. Exactly. I doesn't care what. <laughs> I don't care. But he, he, I don't care if he's he's got the worst tumble ever. And if I was, I would. Robbie, don't tumble after you win. You, you, you know, unless you're doing a a, a, a a double somersault and landing it, you know. Should we go try one out? Yeah, no, yeah, no. no, but, no but, thanks. But he scored the most goals. That's yeah. why he's the best. But he, I know, I know that he would have the same kind of thought process as me. I, I think most forwards will probably think this way: is you can get into positions and miss them, mm -hmm. right? When you start to worry, is when you don't get into the positions to miss. Yeah. Absolutely. That's, a, the, that's the worrying It's thing. all about creating so for the me, chances. I didn't care about missing chances. Huh. I started worrying when I wasn't getting those chances. Yeah. yeah. Because I know that ultimately, if I keep getting into those positions, yeah. it's like being at some point, yeah. it's yes. going to go in and then they're all That's all start I care about. Keep my whole goal when I won all those majors, my whole goal I'd set out was right, 
I'm going to get myself, I'm going to prepare properly, yeah. which is going to get me in a certain mindset, which I'm doing now again. If I get in the mindset, there's four majors a year, so probably three I'll get right, you know. Two of the three I'll get in contention. And I was working, I said, well, two of the three, that's, if I get two a year, four in two years, I'll probably win one. Win and all of a sudden I won three. But I won three because I was very comfortable about what I was doing, very relaxed. I was, I was very much in, I'm going to play my game. I'm not necessarily thinking I need to get lucky. I don't need to think I need a big day. I don't need to think I need an out-of-body experience day. I just need to play my game. And if I keep playing my game, I'm going to be there so often that it's going to work out. I wasn't, you can't guarantee winning. Just like you can't guarantee you're going to go and score so a goal. But you can guarantee getting yourself in positions, creating those positions. Some nights, those positions, the ball doesn't come to you and it's no use. Yeah. But you know if you keep creating the positions, it's, it's putting the, the backs under pressure and somebody else might score. Yeah. You know, you, but you're doing, you, you, your job is, is, you know your job. And that's, if you can keep doing that and are very comfortable with that. Going back to your junior question, I I do really believe being a big fish in a small pond is very important. So any of the Irish lads, I know it's hard for them now coming over to academies over here in the, with the football, but I'd recommend they go to a club that they're going to get looked after in. Okay. So if they go to a really big club and they're cool. competing against you know a lot of great yeah, players. Yeah, Arsenal when I came up, when I first. So when Arsene Wenger first came, Liam Brady was there. Yeah. And a, a lot of Irish players come over there. Yeah. And they were really good players. Yeah. But, and then they used to live in digs yeah. with other families yeah, as yeah. they was young. But I think even them, they said that it was great for them to come over and play for a team like Arsenal mm. because the standard was much higher. There's more required of them so they get better quicker. Whereas if they was in Ireland playing against lesser players... I, I, I agree with, might... with, with Ireland, but you think about it like this. Okay. You go to Arsenal... Yeah. What's the chance of you at 19 years of age making the first team? Yeah. yeah. You go to, say, Leeds. Yeah. If you get good at 19 years of age, they're going to promote yeah. you straight away and you're going yeah, to play. 100%. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'm, I'm not saying, I'm saying a club that needs you, that's going to mind you, that's going to, if you're good and you're having a bad run, they're going to, geez, no, no, we've got to keep them, we've got to keep, yeah. we've got them. Whereas with Arsenal, you've got, if you've got so many players wanting to get in there, you know, they're going to replace you. Okay. Just bring somebody else in. You know, Because remember, the person who's coming in, you want to give them their chance. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 so, and I also think, you go to Academy at Arsenal and you're a great player, right? Not, comes to, say, 19 years of age, okay, and it's time you're out of youth, you're, 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 you're maybe 20 years of age, and they send you off on loan. Now, you're a great player. They send you on loan to a championship team. It feels like a little bit of a, you're not that great. Yeah. Whereas if you're at Leeds you United... Can, that can sometimes be much harder than what you think. But I think it's hurting them. Because you're going... Remember, this is, this is the thing. So, it, it, I mean, okay. I, I left Arsenal. I had a bad attitude when I was younger. I was really... I was mentally tough and I believed in myself like you know, no one else. But my attitude is wrong. I grew up in a rough part of um, London. I was hanging around the wrong crowd of people. So I got sold by Arsenal because I made a mistake. I threw my shirt at the youth team manager. But I remember when Coventry bought me, I remember I went there and I was, I, was, I was like, yeah, because I still had the talent. Yeah. I still had everything. My attitude yeah. was bad, so I was kind of got labelled the bad boy from yeah. the beginning. But I went there... The only person that I actually respected and the reason why I went there was Robbie Keane. Okay. So this is at Coventry. He left, he went to Inter Milan. Yeah. Now I'm at Coventry and I'm, I'm looking around and I'm thinking, there's no one I really look up to to think, I want to be like that. Mm. You know, and I think that's important, like you said. I think if you've got someone in front of you and you yeah. say, I want to reach that level, you then raise your game I can it. raise my yeah. game. If there's yeah. someone like kind of... Like you said, playing golf, right? It's yeah. better to play with people that are better than yeah, me. Yeah, there's no doubt. Yeah. So if I'm, a, if I'm at a smaller team and I'm like, you know, they might be pushing me in the first team, but if I'm 
you end up kind of coasting almost because you can go through the motions because you know you're the best player. Whereas if you're at a team that's a bigger team, you always have to keep yeah, striving. Well, hang on a second. You had the talent. You didn't get demoted because of talent. You got demoted because of a bad attitude. Yeah. So it didn't hurt. It didn't hurt your. I'm talking about the guy who, who, who's maturing, but that does not dare you get sent off, and he should learn. But it's like he's he's like he's failed. Mm. Yeah. No, I understand that. Yeah. I I, I'm 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 not sure what's right and wrong, but I I I I see Ireland at the moment. We are number one in rugby in the world. Yeah. Okay. There's 150 professional rugby players in Ireland. That's all. Something like that. There might be. I'm, yeah. I, that used to be the case. It might be. Uh, might be. It might only be 150. So if we, as a country, as a team, if they looking at, you know, if they, if there's a prop, they have to make sure. Well, we got to have a prop. We got to have. And, and these ones are coming through. We got to make sure. We got to. There's only a certain amount of them that they have. So they, even when a player goes out of form. He's kept and recycled yeah. and managed. And we, whereas England, who are traditionally a powerhouse in rugby, if they have a great player at 22 years of age and he loses form, just bring somebody else in. Yeah. You know, and if he comes back into form, fine. But it's kind of on him. Yes, you know, he, he, he can yeah. be... So I, I, I am a believer in don't... Like, we, we have a big thing coming up in golf. So, 10 players from the European Tour get promoted to the PGA Tour at the end of this season, going forward with yeah. this collaboration. I had my card in the US like five years before I went. I was top five player, top 10 player in the world when I went. These guys are going to go way too early. Early, yeah. And they're going to lose their confidence. How's that going to, yeah, so confidence because they're going to be up against. Well, they're, they're going the, against. Different zone. These guys are on the path that they're growing in their career. In the, and the guys on the PJ Tour mm. pretty much are at the peak of their career. Yeah. Most guys are literally the best players at their peak. So there's plenty of guys on the PJ Tour, they don't realise this, that are average golfers, but they're mm. right in that wheelhouse of their peak. So when you went, you were ready. I, I was really ready. I'm very comfortable so you that like I was ready. In, in the states, it's pretty easy over there. The conditions are good. <laughs> well, yeah, I was yeah, saying yeah. this because yeah. I, I said to I spoke to um, Xander Sheffield the other yeah. day on the range, and he was saying that he actually likes coming over here because he likes to face the difficulties of golf over here, mm. shot shaping and whatnot. And obviously, my next question to him was, how many of the other Americans like it? And he said the same, it's like, it's more difficult to come over here in these kind of conditions and play when they're used to fair weather all the time. Okay. Yeah, I, I think they don't do it enough. Yeah. There's not an, like, clearly it's incentive for Europeans to go to the US because there's a lot of tournaments to play. The problem for the US guys coming across, there really is only this tournament. Yeah. And then one or two others mm -hmm. that come. So they don't do it enough. So if there was more tournaments, then they get used to it. Yeah. I think the bigger problem for the Europeans going across is life in America is very convenient. Convenient is actually mean boring. Yeah. So what I mean by that is you can stay in the same hotel room every week in the US. Yeah. So you, you pick a marriage and yeah. the room is designed the exact same. Same way, yeah. Every restaurant you go into in America, similar. you know exactly what you're going to get. You, you yeah. can go high end, you can go low end. But you know what experience you're going to get. Whereas in Europe, it's different. You wouldn't get, like all the players stay in the one hotel in Europe. We share transport, mm. so you're mixing a lot. Everybody goes out in a group. In the states, they all have room service, drive-through, takeaway, early bird. When you go out in Europe, you don't go into a restaurant without asking. You always say, yeah. hey, have you found any good? And somebody will go, hey, we found a great place down the road with lovely tie, you know, we're going there, why don't you join us? Yeah. So there's that, there's a big buzz with the players in Europe. They, they, they socially, they get on great in Europe. Whereas they go to the States, when an individual goes to the States from Europe, he goes on his own. And, yeah. and I describe this, Saren Kelsen played in the States, a, a, a Danish lad. He got his card about, six years ago, seven years ago. And I came over, I remember coming over, say, at the start of March, end of February, two months into the season, say, at the time. And uh, 
Shane Larry, Shane Larry was reading me friend, inviting him out for dinner. So it was two months into the season, it was the first time he'd been out to dinner. Because he was over there on his own. Yeah. But he was, you know, yeah. look, no, you, you, you said that about Japanese players, no, yeah. didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Food and yeah. But the worst thing, to, the worst barriers. thing any person can do, business person, anybody who travels, is stay in the hotel room. You should overthink it instead, aren't you? Exactly. Yeah, There's no, out, yeah, nothing good. True. Even saying, oh, I'm going to sit in and watch Netflix or whatever you're going to do. Because you end up thinking subconsciously. Yeah. So Get up, yeah. go downstairs, yeah. eat in the bar downstairs, have yeah. a burger. Look, you, know, you don't have to talk to anybody, but life is going on. Yeah. Just do not spend time in your room. Here's what I feel. As well, like, speaking to you now, honestly, I really love speaking to you. I really enjoy it. I feel like I could speak to you for we weeks. We could speak for yeah. hours. But like, <laughs> I, I'm speaking to you now and I can see real mental toughness in your mind. And I can hear that you have real confidence in everything you're saying and the way you, you do it. In those big situations when you went through tough times, how did you handle that part? I, my tough time started when I was 18 years of age. I remember losing a tournament when I was 18. Uh, two ahead with three to play, bogey the last three holes. And it was an under-21 tournament, Irish Championship. And as kids do, they called me a choker. You know, I felt like a choker. I cried in the car park, you know, and mm. kids are, are harsh. Yeah. Uh, I felt so bad. And I started working with a sports psychologist then. Really? Yeah, 18 years of age, which wasn't done at the time. And what was interesting That's about... Really. That's like uh, way back. No, yeah. no one must yeah. have been doing that back then. Well, it was interesting at the time. I'd actually relaxed. So I, I was tremendous winner. I could beat people. I could beat you. Uh, especially you. The person in front of me, yeah. I could beat. Like I'd look at you. Well, what are you doing? I'm going to beat you. I'm going to figure. Yeah, yeah. If you, you and me That's went. That's what I'm like with Trevor. Yeah, well. yeah. <laughs> no, me the if, if, yeah. if we went inside and played table tennis, right? I go inside and play table tennis. If you, I'm useless at table tennis, yeah. but if you're yeah. slightly better than my useless, I would want to beat you, you be so better, much. Yeah. If you were really good, I'd have no yeah. interest. Because yeah. I'm not going to beat you, but like if I, it just I just wanted yeah, yeah. I just wanted to be a bit better, and then I'm going <laughs> to figure. It. And you know what? I, I take so much joy in beating you because I know I beat you because mentally I figured something out. I, yeah, you I had you. It, I had yeah. you. It's like boxing. So, you just yeah, you I had a little bit. I handled the yeah. pressure more, or mentally whatever. So maybe I got that from my brothers. I got it from my dad. We were competitive. But I started working with a sports uh, psychologist at 18, and I've always wanted to know what's going on. I, I think that's, and to my detriment at times, I not just want to know how to do it, I actually want to know how it works, mm -hmm. why it works. And, and going back to our sports, I, I think of this earlier, uh, there'd be so many things I would know going on in golf, you know, and unfortunately, experience is a huge part of golf it's going to take years to get this experience right and i could sit watching a football match on the tv and go what the hell is the, why is the manager playing him and like i, I think i know you probably said that about me yeah I, but you know you think you know, ken doherty world snooker champion irishman said this to me one day and it was so f I, I i play a bit of snooker like we all do in ireland indoor sport and and he's talking to me about the air conditioning in the room and how it's affecting the kick on the balls. Mm. You know, just the different temperature in the room, how it was affecting how the balls were moving. And you know, I play snooker and I, I, that hadn't crossed and my mind. Actually oh, yeah. Seriously? Oh, yeah. But if you're a professional he, yeah, he, at a sport, yeah, yeah. the, know, the yeah. little oh, things yeah, that we true. do. Yeah, yeah. And because of that, I know in golf that I know things. I can look at the blades of grass and if they're going this way or that way, yeah, I can, t I can tell so pro. many things. And it's instinctive. I, that's why I heard you speaking about that. I, I don't yeah. know who you were speaking to, but you were speaking about like, chipping the ball and the grass and this and that. And I was like, Yo, you're all them thoughts go into one shot. No thought though, because it's instinctive. Yeah, it's I just look down, that's what it does. Like I, I look at the carper here and I can say, you know, that's going down grain, so the ball's coming out fast, and that dark stuff is into the grain, the ball's coming out slow. Yeah. So it doesn't, it's instinctive. Mm. But I guarantee you, I look at a football match, and I like everybody else, I play yeah. schoolboy soccer and, uh, yeah. and other sport Gaelic, and, and I'm, I think I have an idea. Mm. What, 
you take in the, just, just that more, little yeah, need, yeah. the little bit at the end and you're talking like you're the first person I've ever 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 heard this harlot okay you're the first person that I've heard <laughs> anything <laughs> anything I'm, to, no, yeah, hold on. I'm yeah, not dissing yeah, I'm just saying that like for, for me from my point of view I'm I would say I'm a I love football. Yeah. Like, I will watch football. This is your golfing golf. personality, too. You are obsessed with, I the, am obsessed obsessed with the beauty. Yeah. I, yeah. But you're I, obsessed I with sleep. the beauty. Yeah, the beauty. Ireland yeah. can never be as beautiful as Messi. Even if he's a better footballer, he cannot move the same purely because of his physicality. Oh, no, I agree yeah. with that part, but there's an element in football, and, and, and what I would say is okay, for example, last season. He had a great season and scored loads of goals. Yeah. He did have a dip in his season. Yeah. And it was very, very... Uh, you could see the dip. And that dip happened when, he needed when De Bruyne score. wasn't playing well and when he got injured. Support. So it was very clear that he needs service to be effective. Whereas these other players, they, they're the best players in the world because they can make their goals by themselves. Mm. That's what I regard as the best players ever. Players that can make their own luck, change a game by themselves. They don't have to rely on um, service to score. Mm. I actually agree with that statement. The player who makes his own luck is the best player. But I'm going to hold you on <laughs> Harland. If he, if, if he sustains his scoring, that's his job. And if he turns around and he, he's putting... Look, you're, you're, again, we're, it's like in golf. You can't compare Jack Nicklaus and Tiger Woods. They're just so yeah. way up there. And if you had Jack Nicklaus now, he would still well, win his 18. Him. Well, because if you had Jack Nicklaus now, he'd still win his 18 majors. Tiger Woods, if, if he wasn't winning, would win 18 majors. So physically, Tiger Woods... I'm saying you can't compare, you can't compare the rest of us to them. And, you, you know, comparing Harlan to Messi and Ronaldo and, and, and the likes... Maradona, they really wear it. Like, yeah. if Harlan gets to that level, we know about it. We will know. <laughs> like, ultimately, that level is just way up there. And it's a high standard. The fact that we're, you're, you, you, you at least mention him with him is good enough that he has a chance. No, no I, I'm, like I said, Harlan's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. But one thing I would ask you, this is one thing I do want to ask. This one thing, because yeah. this is what our show is about. I look at golf. I come from inner London. Okay. My dad, my mum was a cleaner. My dad worked for British Telecom. Yeah. Playing football is a cheap sport. Right? Yeah. You can just get anything round. The tennis okay. ball, throw your bags down, you can play. Yeah. With golf, there's more to it. You got to buy clubs. You got to get lessons. You got to pay for balls. You got to pay to play on the course. All these things. How do you think golf can evolve so it's more accessible to everyone? So I, and I make I, it more enjoyable yeah. for everyone. Okay. It is interesting for. Irish-wise, my dad was a policeman. Shane Lowry's father uh, worked for the electricity company. Gray McDowell's father was the manager in the clubhouse bar. Yeah. Jerry, uh, Jerry McElroy, Rory's father, was a barman. Mm. There's nobody who succeeds in sport who comes from a silver spoon. Because if you've got a silver spoon, you just... Yeah, you have the, the, you have you, the you safety net all the time. Yeah, yeah. the one thing you don't want in life, unfortunately, this I know this options. If you have a bad day and you have options, you'll go do something else. If you have a bad day and you have to get up the next day, and the only thing you will have is your sport, you yeah. will do it. So that's first and foremost. You need that that grit. Strangely enough, golf is cheap in Ireland. It's free, practically free. If you, and if, 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 if you, my kids join the local club, it's 150 euro for the year, free lessons. I never bought a golf ball in my life. There's always hand-me-down clubs. Amazing, my kids play in the runners. My 15-year-old kid plays in runners and a tracksuit. No mm. golf. I don't let him have, because I, I, he's not keen on the game, I don't allow him have it. Mm. As in, if, he's, if, if he gets keen in the game and he wants some equipment, I'm, I'm happy to go. But he's, at the moment, until, you know, there's no point in buying him good stuff it's until he likes it. So you, to play with that. This is the interesting good. thing in golf in Ireland. If you showed an interest and you knocked at the door and they said no and you went to knock the next day, you said, 
they will let you into the club to play if you if you want if you're keen. You will easily find, and the only place that it's hard is in the city, because the clubs are full mm. outside the countryside. You can play. Everybody plays. It's yeah. practically free. The lessons yeah. are free. There's clubs around everywhere. Ireland is. Now I, I agree. There's other places that isn't. But the one good thing about golf is. The one, thing you, the one thing for golf, you need to be very rich in time. So the people who play golf in Ireland are on shift works, policemen, taxi drivers, mm. obviously people who are successful businessmen because they have more time. But it's time, and that's yeah. the big killer. We do need to get golf courses into cities. Yeah. I just built a putting green in my local uh, park. Well, so really. free to use for the public. Wow, just walk amazing. up, play. We, Wilson supplied the clubs. Yeah. Uh, and you, you, any, and it's free. Yeah, I insist it. I'll build it, that's you amazing. run it, and it's free. And, it, and if you like yeah. it, yeah. then you can progress to the yeah. par three. And there's par three courses in Ireland, and you can progress. The hardest thing I will say is if you come from the inner city, you know, how do you get access to a golf course? Because there's none there. So said, yeah. going forward, we're seeing a lot of gamers play golf. As yeah, in, they play yeah. the, the, on, on a simulator. Yeah. Some of that will drive through. Uh, but it's not an expensive game if you don't. Like, you know, I, as I, said, I made my money finding golf balls. I used to find the golf balls and sell them. I never bought a golf ball. That. Clubs, I got a club for my birthday. I got a club for Christmas once I, once yeah. I was into the game. Uh, do you not think rules kind of holds the game back as well? Etiquette or rules? Which do you think? Rules. Rules of the clubs? Yeah, or, or rules like as in rules, you've got to like, again, the, the dress code. Yeah, you know, no doubt. But, but they're, you got to like remember. back a little bit. But they're only, they're kind of at certain clubs and it's more, like there is levels of golf clubs. Yeah. So yeah, like, as I said, the kids where I, where you, you start off, you go to the pitch and putt course, which pitch and putt course, you pay your, whatever it was at the time, at, at 50p to play, and you, yeah. you, they're taking your money. They don't care if you could... <laughs> you, you, you turn up your shorts, you run out, and you play. And I think you, you progress from there. But I will say, the, the idea of a dress code and stuff like that, it, it's less and less. That's only at certain clubs. Yeah. And, and I, can walk into a, I, I can walk into a golf club and feel uncomfortable. Really? Of course I can. I, I definitely did when I was younger. Not now, and I, though. So you've got a course you walk into and you go, well, you know, first, first and foremost, can I be on my phone? Can I use my phone? Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, you know, there's, there's the odd place you can feel. Not, yeah. not, not now because I'm older and all that, yeah. but, but certainly growing up, you'd be places. But, but there are only some courses. They're, like I grew up, my golf course, I won't say it, it was a working man's golf course. It was, it was kind of for the police and, and pretty much everybody there was... We've got to come there and play when we visit visit yeah, Ireland. There's there. plenty. I, of, I, there's honestly, I could talk to you. I could talk to you. Yeah, all plenty there. of courses like that in Ireland. I got to drive back to London. Yeah. I got to drive back to London. Before we wrap this up, to wrap this up, yeah. top three courses we can come and play in Ireland on our own show. Well, nearly every course in Ireland is 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 a public pay and play. If you want to pay to play, there's no absolute private. They'll always take your money. Yeah. But what's uh, your best courses to uh, uh, The three courses I like the best in Ireland, it, there's two, two different experiences. You, if you go on links, yeah. I like Royal Port Rush, yeah. Port Marnock, European Club. Yeah, Rory said, Rory that. said yeah, that as well. Yeah. Rory said the island. The island yeah. is fantastic. And then down the south, you have like Ballybunion and Waterville and places like that. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, I haven't played all Is Drummerland good? Drummerland. Yeah. So now, now, yeah. Now you're, you're you're going. There's three resorts. There's three four. Yeah. There's, there's three four resorts in Ireland. So like the premier one would be a Dare Manor, yeah. fantastic right. course resort. Yeah. But like we'll that. that's high end. You reeled off eight there. Bob. Yeah. That's but dr like a Dare Manor, Drumoland are at one end of the scale. At the other end of the scale, you know. A great way to play golf is you, you know if you can find a member, you know you can play for most members. Most members' green fees is like thirty five euros to go play around the golf. Like it, at the time, like they think Port Marnock if you play with a member is thirty five euros. Mm -hmm. Well, if you play with a, a, if you play with a, like if you're going on your own, it could be three hundred euros. Yeah. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. There, there are ways around the system. Sunningdale as well, isn't it? Sunningdale, you play with members. You play with yeah, members. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. So it, it, there are ways around it. Yeah. You, 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 you know, like obviously you 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 say you're going to do teaching now. Yeah. Paddy's golf tips. Yeah. If you could one day, no pressure. But I would. I said to you before, I want to train just for like a week or something as a golfer would when he's coming up, like hours. As in, I knew what it was like to be a footballer growing up, going to the park, playing, all that kind of stuff. I would like to understand what it's like, what a golfer's life is on a day-to-day -day if, if, basis. If you're a kid, it's playing 45 holes a day. Playing the golf, yeah. 45 you, holes a day? Yeah, yeah, yeah but it's not practicing. On the range. It's never going to the range. It's yeah, playing. You said that. As a kid. Earlier. It's just playing. You played at 10 o'clock in the night. Yeah, you just went and played. We, uh, that, the that, like, yeah. golf, golf. So, to me, that's mind-boggling. So as a, as a kid, as, yeah. as a kid, I was thrown, like my dad would bring me to the golf course at 9 o'clock. I'd have whatever it is, a pound fifty to buy a plate of chips and a, and a drink uh, for lunch. And I'd play 18 in for lunch. We'd have putting competitions. We'd go out and play again. We'd have to avoid the, the full members because they're obviously, we're, yeah. we're, and we knew how to do that. And then I'd go home for my tea at five o'clock and I'd beg my dad or my brothers would want to go up after work or whatever. I'd beg them to bring me back up and I'd play another nine in the summer. Ago. But yeah. you did the same with football. <laughs> I guarantee you, everybody around you, your mother or your cousins, your aunts and uncles, he's never got a football out of his hands. He's yeah. always got no, a football. That, he's yeah. always kicking the ball. He's this, that. But that's what you do if you love your sport. But you're gonna... different element. This is, the, this is why I love golf. And you know how much. I love golf more than this guy. <laughs> like, I literally go to sleep sometimes and I just he's think, okay, about what am I going to do tomorrow? How can I improve? Like, but that, yeah, but that's what we all do. But I love it because I, but anything is with golf, I just feel like there's so much different variables that you have to practice yes, that to is, get there. Whereas that is football, the biggest problem. Just the only thing the that changes thing. is the weather. Well, I, 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 I give you one, one good thing. If you practice your short game, it improves your long game. If you practice your long game, it doesn't improve your short game. So oh. if you have less time, when you're practicing your short game, you're figuring out club Good control, place. right? Mm. And which is very important. And that helps in the long swing. But the long swing doesn't help the short game. Mm. So if you have limited time, stick to the short game. I'm but, retired now, Patrick. I don't have no time. Yeah, I have but there's a, time. there's a physical... I guarantee you, you're going to be better off playing... Like my, I told you my 15 year old doesn't really play golf. So he had state exams this year, equivalent to your GCSEs back in Ireland. So he decides because he can study or he can go hit a few shots. Oh, so he yeah. started hitting yeah. a few yeah. shots. Yeah. But he, this week when I've been away, he went up to the golf course on his own and played nine holes. Now that's a breakthrough. That means he's starting to get interested. Yeah. But up to 100%, that, yeah. you know, if you if everything has to be organised for you, you ain't interested. Yeah. So again, with football, if somebody, if your parents are bringing you to the game and doing, you know, yeah, you, you know, you, you have to. No, I wanted to yeah, go. Like, yeah. I, I, like I, I was going to play football matches, and then if I didn't, if I wasn't happy with my performance, I could have scored, but if I wasn't happy, I'd want to go to the the park, practice, yeah. kick the ball against the wall. You know, like graffiti would be on the wall or whatever. Yeah. I want to hit that letter. I want to hit that letter. Yeah. You know, that, that kind it's of the way. Just, There's uh, practice, no difference practice, with practice. golf. Project. Really. Thanks, Guys, so that, I, I really that. enjoyed that. I, 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 I'm trying to learn more about football. <laughs> That's really what Thank you so much. Six foot tall. Gee, six foot four. <laughs> I would, yeah, I mean, I would love